Oklahoma doctors monitoring a 10th probable case of monkeypox. Cases are being monitored right now in all of Oklahoma's surrounding states. Doctors say symptoms include fever, headache, muscle aches, swollen lymph nodes, but most notably a rash that can look like pimples or blisters and may be painful or itchy. Experts say monkeypox is infectious from the time symptoms start until they, the rash is fully healed. A first in decades. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi landed in Taiwan as part of her tour in Asia. Pelosi, the highest ranking official to visit the country in 25 years. KSEO's Amy Liu is in Washington and Amy Pelosi landed on Tuesday despite warnings from China. Well, Jason and Shelby, China warned any engagement with Taiwanese officials would come with consequences. And for that reason, Pelosi's visit to Taiwan has heightened U.S.-China tensions. China, which claims Taiwan is part of its territory, announced multiple military exercises in the waters surrounding the island over the next few days and issued a series of harsh statements after her visit. Pelosi and her delegation met with Taiwan's president, to which she received a civilian honor. She noted lawmakers' bipartisan support for Taiwan's democracy, but stopped short of saying the U.S. would defend Taiwan militarily. She gave a short speech during her meeting with the president, reiterating America's commitment to its sovereignty. Today, the world faces a choice between democracy and autocracy. America's determination to preserve democracy here in Taiwan and around the world remains ironclad. And we're grateful to the partnership of the people of Taiwan in this mission. The White House has said that the U.S. is not interested in deepening tensions with China and that Pelosi's visit is of her own choice. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu, KOCO 5 News. And Oklahoma's U.S. Senator Jim Inhofe and more than two dozen other senators publicly supporting Speaker Pelosi's trip to Taiwan. In a joint statement, the senator said, in part, members of Congress have traveled to Taiwan for decades. Well, this weekend will likely be the last of the summer for most Metro kids. Several districts heading back to class next week. OKCPS OK, says they're preparing to welcome about 8,000 kids back onto the buses. But before they do, administrators are making sure the students are prepared. They say make sure your child is familiar with what their bus stop looks like. If kids know what their bus stop name is, if they know what the houses around it look like, um, whenever they think they're at their stop and they start to get off and they see things looking different, then they know to alert that driver. District officials also recommend that you keep an emergency contact card either on or inside your child's backpack. And also happening now, OKCPS OK and Scissor Tail Park teaming up for a back to school drive. Scissor Tail Park posting this uh, Twitter picture here of the donation box. They're working to collect socks and underwear for students in grades K through 12. You can drop them off at the Scissor Tail Park office and the Scissor Tail Park Farmers Market info tent. A heads up for our friends down in Norman. Happening today, a lot of police officers will be on OU's campus. Norman's PD, Norman PD SWAT team is planning to hold a training drill at Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. So you may hear gunfire, but do not be alarmed. Officers say this training exercise helps them maintain the skills that help ensure safety during large events. This training will be closed to the public. A big pay raise for local VA nurses. The Oklahoma Department of Veterans Affairs says this is the largest pay increase in the agency's history. It's a 10 to 23% pay bump, and it all starts on August 28th. The department says they want their nurses to know how grateful they are for their service to our veterans. It's been several years since two Oklahoma towns were rocked by significant earthquakes. This morning, though, help is on the way. Coming up, details of a new settlement and who will get a payout. Sky 5, the only helicopter bringing you these views here in the morning. Uh, you can see that uh, it looks like traffic is flowing along from what we can see uh, pretty well so far. Um, we're going to keep an eye on traffic for you throughout the morning. We're back after this break.
Hey, good morning, Oklahoma. 613 here on the clock, just about 614 right now. There we go. Uh, everything looks good as you're waking on up on this Wednesday. So happy you are with us. This is Sky 5 flying live over the Lake Hefner Parkway and everything is free flowing along here. No major accidents, so it's a great time to go ahead and get that day started. A reminder here, Sky 5, the only helicopter giving you these exclusive bird's eye views, looks of your morning commute and breaking news all morning long. So we appreciate Chase being up there for us, but everything looks good. What might not be so good, though, is the weather. Yes, you know? <laughs> the heat is just not going anywhere. I keep telling myself I'm going to be like really positive about it every day. And then as it just like it goes like kind of takes a nosedive. Yeah, you just got <laughs> to hold on those days yeah. that we had over the weekend where it was nice and cool. You just right. got to hold on to those. Yeah. Hold on to the memories or else ah, the memories <laughs> or else you're going to go crazy. <laughs> Okay. The dog days of summer. You know, yeah. they, do, yeah. they do kind of chip away over time, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and we're all ready for kind of that change before it ever gets here. It was nice to get that break this last sure. week, mm -hmm. and over the weekend, we'll have some uh, additional slight chances of rain. If you notice, even on the horizon, there's kind of some building clouds up here north of OKC. We're looking from downtown up to the north and east, and how about the colors in the sky? Is that not beautiful right here before the sunrise? And that is just, uh, I, I love seeing that change from the darker blues there to the oranges. Gorgeous. 76 degrees. That's the coolest temperature we've seen here across central Oklahoma uh, so far this morning. Uh, many areas still in the 80s. 82 at Stillwater, 83. Ponca City, my hometown, you get the prize there with the warmest spot in the state right now. Those highs for today, yeah, they are going to heat up with a south wind. 15 to 20 miles per hour. At least we'll have a little bit of breeze there, but looking at 102 to 105, even 106 down near Lawton and Altus, our record 113. That was in 2012. What a ridiculously hot year that was. August 1st of 2012, we did 112, and then we did 112 on August 2nd, and then August 3rd, which is today, that's when we did that 113, and then we had one more hot day uh, tomorrow where we broke records all four days in a row. That's incredible. So um, thankfully we're not we're not there, right? We are 10 years later, and yes, it's still hot, but it's not that hot. Uh, looking at our heat index vice, they're still going to be up around 105 to 107 here in the metro. Now there could be some areas that are up closer to 110. So. Yes, that's a heat advisory for all the counties shaded in orange, almost all of eastern Oklahoma, all of central Oklahoma, and then even parts of southwest and northwestern Oklahoma. For instance, Alva, Fairview, on down to Watonga, Hobart, Altus, you're in the heat advisory. The further west you move, the drier the air is, and so that's why you don't see the heat advisory out there. It's still going to be hot, though. Predictor showing you scattered showers, maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two, popping up there around 4 o'clock by 8 o'clock. One or two potentially left, not a whole lot. What I want to show you, though, is tomorrow morning. Look at 6 a.m. Man, quite a bit of rain spreading through Kansas, Arkansas, Missouri, and even northeast Oklahoma. And then more showers and storms as that wave comes down into Oklahoma tomorrow. That's 4 o'clock. You could see a few of those persist. I think they'll die out pretty quick as we go later into the evening hours. So a 20% chance today. Mainly Stillwater, Ponca, Enid, Alva, Woodward, Clinton. And again, that's a very slim 20%. Most areas, remember, it's 80% chance that it won't, right? And then another 20% chance tomorrow, but up to 30 Ponca and Stillwater and 40% northeastern Oklahoma. So the 5 plus 5, yeah, after tomorrow, looks like it is going to get drier. 100s Saturday and Sunday, then 96. How about those? Four of those next week and some more chances of rain Wednesday and Thursday. Let's check in with Sky 5 pilot Chase Rutledge. He's flying near Northwest Expressway in MacArthur. Chase. Okay. I think I'm taking this one. Thank you, Mike. I'll be playing the role of Chase today. I'm not as funny as him, but... No. You know, I try. Yeah, he's, Here, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. Here's a live look outside right now from Sky 5, though. Everything looks good. This is near MacArthur and Northwest Expressway cruising along. And then the rest of those drive times here in the metro, we are clean and green, everyone. Starting off that day right. We've got five minutes from I-240 to downtown, 17 minutes from Midwest City to downtown, and 17 from Norman to Oklahoma City. He's hilarious, but you're also funny. What? Sure. Just want to make me? sure. I, yeah, yeah, you oh, are. You thanks. Are. You're buttering me up. Looking ahead to the weekend, some Oklahomans will head to Missouri this weekend to help clean up from the damaging floods that they've seen out there. The Oklahoma Baptist Disaster Relief Team plans to deploy this Sunday. They're going to help remove dirt and mud from areas that were flooded. This is the same system that is blamed for more than 30 deaths over in Kentucky. So good to see some help going out there.
Nearly six years after a 5.0 magnitude earthquake hit Oklahoma, a legal settlement is bringing financial relief to two towns that were shaken and damaged. Now, that disaster shut down businesses and also damaged several homes. That's right, and the Pawnee County District Court has signed off on a class action settlement regarding the earthquakes near Cushing and Pawnee in 2016 and 2017. The agreement was reached with Eagle Road Oil LLC for $850,000. The company denies all allegations that their wastewater disposal wells played a role in those quakes. The lawsuit is set to continue with three other companies. Well, this morning we have some more details about how federal pandemic relief money will be distributed in Oklahoma City. The ARPA funds or American Rescue Plan Act were discussed in yesterday's city council meeting. There were nearly 900 applications representing about 500 businesses. Of those, more than 70% were minority owned, 11% were nonprofits, and so far 114 applicants were processed and are ready to be funded. Students are heading back to class next week and KOCO is making sure both you and your students are prepared. That means preparing them to take part in school security drills. How should you talk to your child about such a sensitive topic? We're asking the experts their answers in our next half hour. Stay with us. Sky 5, the only helicopter flying for you every weekday morning. We are back with your latest traffic update after the break. A mishap sent a paraglider plunging to earth with his parachute tangled up. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in the GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, watch this heart-pounding video showing a paraglider narrowly escaping death. Oh my God! Professional aerobatic paraglider Kevin Phillip is thousands of feet in the air when there appears to be turbulence, his chute tangling in the sky as Philip free falls down. I tried a twisty misty, which is an aerobatic maneuver, and uh, my left hand got stuck in the riser. Moments before hitting the ground, Philip is finally able to deploy his rescue chute. Oh, God. Actually, I didn't realize when I was falling or from inside, you don't really realize in this moment because um, there's a lot of other things you have to take care of. And I did everything to 
to avoid an impact. Coming up at 7 a.m., more from our interview with this incredible survivor. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Living with metastatic breast cancer means being relentless because every day matters. And having more of them is possible with Rosenio, the only one of its kind proven to help you live significantly longer when taken with fulvestrant, regardless of menopause status. Rosenio plus fulvestrant is for HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer that has progressed after hormone therapy. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an anti-diarrheal, and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, tell your doctor about any fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate or if you are nursing pregnant or plan to be every day matters and I want more of them ask your doctor about every day for Zenio 625 time for weather on the fives here on this Wednesday morning and we have beautiful skies here starting out uh, mostly clear let's check our RVS cam just because that shot is so gorgeous right now 76 degrees here in OKC many areas have been in the 80s though. Johnson Controls camera down in Cleveland County. Norman, hey Norman, look at that. You're finally down to 79 degrees. Still feels like 80, but hey, at least the actual temperature is down below 80. Uh, we are going to heat it up quickly. Uh, feels like planner today, 106 to 107 this afternoon. South winds, they'll be around 15 to 20 miles per hour with some higher gusts, so we'll have a breeze to go with it, but like a blast furnace out there, you know, 109 and still water for feels like temperature. So one close to 110 when the heat index get up, gets up that high, you got to have a heat advisory out and that's exactly what we have today. So uh, tomorrow, some 100 certainly still left in there. However, tomorrow we're going to have some rain chances and even a few today across northwest, north central Oklahoma, especially I do think there will be very isolated. Those rain chances expand though, coming up for tomorrow and so we're I'm excited about that. We could use some more rain for sure. More on that coming up. All right, Michael, thank you. Well, this morning we want to give a very special birthday shout out to Woody Sylvester. Woody just celebrated his 105th birthday. Wow. These photos here shared by the Oklahoma Department of Veteran Affairs. He is a World War II veteran who was presented with a state flag that flew over the Capitol. He also received an ODVA coin. Uh, Woody currently holds the title of oldest living man here in our state. So we want to wish him a big, big happy birthday and also want to thank him for his service to our country. All right, let's take you back outside. 626 Sky 5 right now flying live over I-40 and Morgan Road and things are looking pretty good here in this area. Pretty empty here in this area. Not much traffic to deal with. You should be good to go if you're heading out. And we continue to follow breaking news from overnight. Uh, you'll see all this only here on five. Two teens hit by gunfire and rushed to the hospital. Coming up, we're live with details on where it all happened and what police are saying.
KOCO crews bringing you live looks each and every weekday morning. We're back with your latest news, weather and traffic in just one minute. Watching KOCO 5. Breaking news is happening now. And that breaking news here and only on five, two teens shot in Moore and rushed to the hospital. Our KOCO photographer first on scene overnight. KOCO's Audrey Goodson standing by live now with details just released by investigators to her on scene. And a heat advisory in effect again today, but a few of you may see a couple of storms as well. And a new audit shedding light on how Oklahoma County handled COVID relief funds coming up how investigators say it should have been handled. All right, Oklahoma, good morning on this Wednesday, halfway through the week already. So happy you're with us. I'm Shelby Cashman. And I'm Jason Hackett. Take a look at Sky 5, the only Ooh. helicopter flying during weekday mornings, keeping an eye on the commute and right now keeping an eye on the sunrise as well. Beautiful stuff. That's what it feels like outside the surface of the sun. So it's fitting. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Let's crank up the heat a little more. Whatever. We'll make it right. Yeah, we, we've done well. Sure, okay. you're right. We did 110. Exactly. So yeah. We got this. We got it. Yeah, uh, 10 years ago, they did 113 also. Uh, All-time record here in OKC. Uh, that was an extremely hot summer. And looking at our views here across central Oklahoma, yeah, we've got, uh, well, we've got most clear skies right now. A few high clouds there on the horizon. We'll check our Johnson Controls camera down in Norman. 79 has not cooled off much. Meanwhile, over in McLeod, or I should say in Stillwater, OSU Stillwater, 79 degrees. Let's see if I can get McLeod to launch here. There we go, 81 in McLeod right now, 81 still in the morning. Take a look at I-40, uh, making your way over toward Midwest City from Shawnee. And yeah, it's still warm here all across central Oklahoma. Uh, mix of 70s and some low 80s, 76 at El Reno and OKC. That's the coolest temperature I've seen so far. You make your way over towards Shawnee. It's 81 there, 82 in Tecumseh at the moment. And our heat index values, look at that, peaking at 107 today. Yellow icons, caution, watch out, right? That's We always put those on whenever we want to really draw attention on there. And looking at those highs today, yeah, low to mid 100s across the state. We are going to have a south breeze up to 15 miles per hour. That'll help a little bit. But again, that heat advisory in effect until 8 p.m. Be aware of that. There are some slight rain chances today across northern Oklahoma. Those expand tomorrow, though. More on that here in just a few minutes. All right, Michael, thank you. We're following breaking news. You'll only see right here on KOCO 5. Two teen boys hit by gunfire. Both rushed to the hospital after running for their lives. Our crews were first on the scene overnight. And Audrey Goodson joins us live now with details just in from police. Audrey. Good morning, guys. This was a double shooting involving two teenage boys. Right now, police are still trying to figure out exactly what led up to the shooting. Now, what we do know is that this happened around 1 o'clock this morning in a parking lot near South Northwest 27th and Shields and more. One teen was shot and ran away where he was found in a courtyard and then taken to a local hospital. The other teen was also shot and ran away from the scene. He then got into a car and showed up at a nearby hospital. One of the victims has been transported and the other is still being treated. Reporting in more, Audrey Goodson, KOCO 5 News. All right, Audrey, thank you. More than $3 million awarded to several programs, all aimed at helping prevent homeless youth here in the metro. City, city leaders say homelessness and specifically youth homelessness has increased dramatically since the beginning of 2020. At yesterday's city council meeting, the city officially accepted and distributed more than $3 million from the Youth Homelessness Demonstration Program under HUD. Oklahoma City is the first in the state and only one of about two dozen communities in the country to get federal money to help homeless youth. 
we know this is a new initiative in the way that we really are focused again on youth who have otherwise maybe not felt like their voice is heard. The money, which has already been awarded, will be distributed between four different programs. Uh, this money will help extend program hours, fund transitional housing and rehousing programs and also help with job placement. Happening in just a few hours from now, Oklahoma death row inmate James Coddington will get his chance at clemency. He's convicted of beating his coworker and friend to death. This hearing was scheduled for last week, but because of a conflict there, the pardon and parole board rescheduled it to today. Uh, if recommended for clemency, the decision will then go to Governor Stitt. Coddington's execution is set for August 25th. We, of course, plan on following this throughout the day, so stick with KOCO as we await the decision. Well, last month was dry and full of fire danger. This morning, we're getting more details about just how bad it was. Crews with the Oklahoma City Fire Department say it was a potential record month. In July, fire crews battled 324 grass fires, and they fear August could bring challenges as well. So let's get over to meteorologist Michael Armstrong. Time for weather on the fives here. And Michael, some good news here potentially for the fire danger. Yeah, that's right. We, we just need to get the rain. That's the bottom line. Uh, if we, and we need it in waves. We need multiple waves of rain to get rid of this flash drought that we got. You know, on June 10th, right about there, it just shut down as far as getting much in the way of rainfall. And that's one thing that we've enjoyed the last several summers, about the last five years, as we've had some rainy periods in July and August. We just haven't had very many this year. So our triple digit tracker, 19 days so far here in Oklahoma City. We average about seven to nine 100 degree days. Today we're going to make that 20, almost three weeks of 100 degree heat in the afternoon. So here across central Oklahoma, just a warm start this morning, mostly clear skies, 83 this morning on your wet to wear forecast, sunglasses, t-shirts. Yes, a hot afternoon with 102 expected for our daytime high temperature. Some areas a little bit hotter though. Stillwater 102, 104 at Clinton, 102 Woodward as well, 105 Altus and Hollis and Altus 106, Lawton 106. So yeah, it's going to be scorching hot today again. So we have that heat advisory in effect because of those temperatures and those that humidity combination. 20% uh, chance of rain today. Look at tomorrow though. Hey, even higher chance across Tulsa, Bartlesville, 30% Ponca City and Stillwater. We're hoping some of that rain will make it down here into central Oklahoma. Let's check in with Sky, Fly, Sky 5 who's flying right now. I-44 and I-40 near the Amarillo Junction. Shelby? Yeah, that's right. So let's take a look at it. Everything seems to be flowing along nicely. We haven't had reports of any major overnight accidents here that could slow you down. So at least in this area, things look good near the Amarillo junction, but let's take a look at the rest of your drive times across the metro. We've got 24 minutes from Guthrie to OKC, nine minutes from Moore to OKC and 16 from Yukon into downtown OKC. We got a traffic alert for those of you who drive on the Northwest Expressway this morning at nine. Crews will be working on Northwest Expressway from Classen to Morgan Road. This is all to fix potholes in that area. This work is expected to be completed today and the city is asking that you slow down and of course be mindful around the crews. Oklahoma County being put in the spotlight this morning by the state auditor's office for how they handled their federal COVID relief money. State Auditor Cindy Bird says this is not mismanaged funds. Rather, the county simply did not follow necessary steps required by the federal government to report how the grants were being spent. The 27 page audit shows quote serious findings related to the more than $50 million that Oklahoma County got for COVID relief. We reached out to the county commissioners for comment on this, but as of this morning, we have not gotten the statement they told us that they would send. Attorneys general from across the country, including ours right here in Oklahoma, want to crack down on those annoying robocalls that we seem to always get. Oklahoma AG John O'Connor said the group will investigate and take legal action against companies that allow illegal foreign robocalls here in the United States. O'Connor says Americans get a combined 33 million robocalls each day and that scammers got close to $30 billion through these calls. Well, this morning relief is on the way for Cherokee Nation ranchers. That tribe just announced a $1 million program to help ranchers experiencing a hay shortage due to the drought. Up to 2000 ranchers could get a one time payment of $500. You can apply starting Monday through August 19th or until funds last.
Developing now out of Kansas, voters there blocked an effort to end the right to abortion in the state. It was a vote watched closely here in Oklahoma since Kansas is our neighbor to the north. The turnout was reportedly higher than expected and the vote not that close. 58% to 41% of voting to protect the right to an abortion in Kansas. A new update this morning on the nation's critical baby formula shortage. It's now better than it was, but we are not back to normal yet. Roughly 20% of all types of baby formula were out of stock during the week ending July 24th. Well, the White House is doing what it can, like bringing in formulas from overseas. The FDA says formula production needs to continue at high levels for six to eight more weeks to keep up with the demand. Happening now, the Oklahoma City Zoo encouraging you to get the kids out to the zoo one last time before they head back to class. The zoo announcing that from noon to two every weekday from now until August 19th, you can get into the zoo at no cost. Final entry is allowed no later than 2 p.m. Regular zoo hours are still adjusted 8 to 3 due to that summer heat.